I was around long enough to remember what it was like before we had Ofsted and uh, whatever the faults are, they're better than punch and guesswork, which was what was around before. Um, and I do like Michael Wilshaw, and I sat on the select committee where we did a pre-appointment hearing, and I was really nervous about appointing Michael Wilshaw because I thought, if you want a head teacher to turn around a really poor school, this is your guy. But Ofsted is massive. It's absolutely massive. It takes in everything apart from HE, from what I can see. And well, some HE. Well, some HE. But it, it just, it, it didn't have that breadth. When you think about the people that we've had pre previously, we, um, and, um, however, I think he's been, he made some mistakes at the beginning, particularly around press, etc. But I think he's been wise enough to surround himself with people who have the knowledge in the areas that he's got gaps. But I do think that him and Ofsted are dragged in so many different directions by politicians, etc. Before the election, and I met with dozens and dozens and dozens of head teachers, and every one of them said, look, we need a period of stability. We need to be, but you must change this. You must change this. And everyone had something different. It wasn't the same. And I, and you know, I don't want to be kind of rude about this, but you know, get this is too naive for words. Other than the NHS, the biggest spender in this country is education. You're never going to get politicians out of that. Ideology is going to be really important. And I'm sorry, but you're just going to be on the receiving end of it, as I was for years. <laughs> you know, we try to get people. We, I do think we ought to keep the politicians and not allow the Secretary of State to write the history curriculum, but the kind of general direction of travel, you're never going to get politicians out of it.